Hello, I'm Dr. Patrick Hu, CEO of Moffitt Cancer Center. We're here in Chicago at ASCO 2024. I'm here with Dr. Hatem Solomon, breast cancer expert and clinical trial expert in general. So thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me, appreciate it. So what's exciting here at ASCO 2024? Well, I think uh, the story coming out of ASCO 2024 for breast is uh, antibody drug conjugates are kind of really ruling the day. So we expect a big presentation upcoming from uh, the Destiny Breast 06 study. And that's looking at using frontline uh, treatment with INHER2 or trastuzumab deruxatecan, which is an antibody drug conjugate, as the first line of treatment for women with metastatic uh, breast cancer that's HER2 low, we call. And it, we expect it to be positive data, which means that these agents are increasingly becoming important earlier and earlier on in the treatment of disease. So we await that data. It should be presented shortly, but it looks like that may be practice changing and it could herald also the onset of other antibody drug conjugate data that's emerging from the conference as well. Uh, stuff like datapotamab with other combinations seem to be really starting to show some results. So I think more to be you know, kind of presented, but this could be something that will really change the treatment of metastatic breast cancer substantially. Wow, how exciting is that? So these are antibodies that are linked with drug conjugates. So what are the best drugs to conjugate, it seems, in these drugs? Right now, it seems that most of the successful ones use what are called topoisomerase 1 inhibitors. These are a class of drugs that work by fouling up the DNA kind of machinery within the cancer cells. And they seem particularly susceptible to these types of drugs when delivered uh, through an antibody drug conjugate. So most of the activity, particularly with drugs like uh, trastuzumab, deruxatecan, have really shown very potent um, activity, even in patients who haven't responded well to prior therapies when they've used these topoisomerase 1 inhibitors. So I think you're going to see a lot of drug companies potentially using these payloads. But there are some other stuff too, like uh, microtubule inhibitors that are highly active in breast cancer. And we do have drugs that use that payload as well. Wonderful. So like the Ibrahim or TCAN derivatives like SN38 yes. is used for on, yes. on like on Sazituzumab. So I know Trope 2 is one of the antigens that's used, and you said HER2 was another. Yes. What other antigens are there that people are targeting with ADCs? So uh, Nectin, uh, the Nectin 4 uh. target appears to be something that's gaining some steam in certain um, uh, areas. It may be more important with, say, uh, GU cancers, genital urinary cancers, but there are subsets of breast cancer that do express it as a target and that may be something that could be worthwhile going after. The other important ones are Claudins, like so certain forms of Claudins which form these kind of like tight junctions between cells. As they become exposed when cancer cells kind of like separate from each other, they're viable targets to go after with antibody drug conjugates. They're also showing some promising activity as well. So I think you're starting to see the emergence of those kind of antibody drug conjugates as well. And it'll be important because targeting the cells by one target alone encourages resistance, right? And because you can eliminate those susceptible cells that have the target, then you're left with others that don't have it, right? So if we have multiple choices to go after the cells with, we can in essence rationally go from one drug to the next to the next and control metastatic disease and maybe even potentially extinguish it over time. And that would be the, the uh, goal ultimately of all these new drugs. What an exciting time. Thank you, Dr. Hatem Salman, breast cancer clinical trial expert, talking about the exciting world of antibody drug conjugates, especially in advanced breast cancer. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Patrick.